The question around town is can we use generative fill for high quality pro compositing? Here we have the background selected. If we click on generative fill and type in something like green mountains and click on generate, it does a pretty good job but the edges are messed up. The background is of very, very low quantity. There are a couple of other things we need to fix. But apart from that, overall, if you zoom out, it does a pretty good job. Have a look at the second one, the third one. With all of them, it matches the lighting, the color, the perspective, all of that is good. So how can we take the good and improve what is not optimal? In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to make the most of generative fill and even with its limitations, how to create beautiful professional composites. So without any further ado, let's get started. back in the magical world of Photoshop. And if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to ensure is that you're seeing the contextual taskbar. If you're not, go to window and make sure contextual taskbar is checked. Let's make a selection of the subject directly by clicking on select subject. Once you have a selection, let's invert the selection. See how easy it is with the contextual taskbar. Right here, if you click, it inverts the selection right now, the background is selected. Now let us click on generate a fill. You can type in whatever you want in the background. For this example, I just want some green mountains and click on generate. I've also tried mountains with lakes. You can try mountains with rivers. You can try some other things, maybe a cityscape, but generative fill usually can mess up with cityscapes. I've already done some generations and as you can see, most of them look perfectly amazing. Let's go with either one of those. Let's go with this one. The first step to clean this up is remove the subject. So select the lasso tool right there and make a selection right outside of the subject. Leave a little bit of gap and you can see where we are going with this. You can also select the messy areas around. And since we need to just erase it, click on generate a fill, leave it blank and generate. And there you go. It does a fantastic job. First one, second one, third one. Which one do you want to go with? Let's go with the third one. Now there is no doubt that the background still has some low resolution, low quality issues. So how do we get over that? So that is right now the limitation of generative fill. Yes, you can generate box by box, but sometimes when you want to just create a background that absolutely matches, it helps to generate it all at once. And we're going to cover just increasing the resolution of the entire image in a future video. But for right now, since the original background, if you look at the original image is already a little bit out of focus and blurred out, we can use the help of blur to kind of mask and hide a little bit of the issues of the background. Create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. This is a merged layer of everything you see in the canvas right now. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters so that whatever filter you apply, we can change the values later. Now let's go to filter, blur gallery, tilt, shift. We will apply a slight gradual blur. You see this area between these solid lines? The blur there is zero and the blur gradually increases from the solid line to the dotted line to whatever value you choose. So right now, if the blur is at 47, you will notice that at the solid line, the blur is zero and gradually it increases to 47 till the dotted line and after that it is 47. So let's add a gradual blur. The subject would be standing right about here. So the blur starts from here and let's take the dotted line to about this point and let's add some blur. So we can control the blur directly from here. I feel at about 40 pixels is fine. You can add some green from right here, but we're gonna do that later anyway. Hit okay for now. And suddenly the background becomes absolutely usable. Let's hide it, we don't need the bar right now. Now it is time for us to bring out our traditional Photoshop techniques to create a clean and precise composite. For it, first of all, select the background layer, make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now place it at the very top. Now you can use your favorite selection method to create a precise selection of the subject. You can use the quick selection tool right here, click on select subject, and then click on the mask button. Have a look at it, so much better. But right now, there are a couple of discrepancies here and there, we need to work with the mask. Now you can take your time to do it. You can select the mask, take the brush, with black or white as the foreground color, just improve these areas. So I'm gonna choose white, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background choose a soft round brush, erase the extras, make a soft edge. It's all up to you. Take your time to do it. You can also use the pen tool. I already have a nice selection made. If you want to learn more about selections or the pen tool, there are videos right here that you can watch later. So right now I'm just gonna load my selection. Select, load selection. I had saved this subject, hit okay. And now click on the mask button. There you go. The edges are perfect. It's matching beautifully and everything is going well. 
have a look at the composite. It's, it looks finished, but there are a couple other things we can do to blend it even better. Have a look, there is a lot of light coming in from the left hand side. How about we click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient, not gradient map, gradient. And let us create a radial gradient. In the style section, choose a radial. Now you can place it right here. Most of you know where we are going with this. Now single click on this one and for the highlights, let us choose the color white or bright yellow, something like this. That's fine. Hit OK. Now as it goes to transparent, you want to make sure that on the left hand side, the opacity at the top is 100 and click on the slider at the top, it should be zero. And at the bottom, as it fades, we can choose the color to be reddish or orangish. That's up to you. So I'm gonna choose this color right here. Hit OK. Have a look at the highlight. It looks amazing. Hit OK. And now you can move it around anywhere you want. How cool is that? You can increase the size. So let's increase the scaling. And still, it doesn't look right. There is something we need to set right here. Hit OK. Change the blend mode since this is a flare and it's supposed to make things brighter, not darker. Change the blend mode from normal to screen. Now have a look. Now let's get back to it. You can increase the scale even more. Or you can also hit OK. You can choose the gradient tool right here. And in the newer versions of Photoshop, you can adjust it directly on the canvas. This looks very nice. Let's keep it that way. Select the move tool and we are good to go. Now to blend it even more and even better, let's add some color grading on top of everything. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. You can use whatever technique you want for color grading. And for warm composites like this, I always like to add crisp warm. This just does the job all the time. Now this is of course too much. You can either decrease the opacity like this, or you can take it away from the dark areas by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer. Take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Of course, this is gonna be harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, take it all apart, and then hit OK. Now let's decrease the opacity to about 50. And there you go, that also adds. Now after you feel everything is finished, I still highly recommend that you go ahead and take a break and then look at it with fresh eyes you would see something. So right here, I see that there's some highlights right here, which does look unnatural. It may be natural. It may look exactly like this if he's in the scene, but sometimes we have to create a fake something to make it more realistic in Photoshop. So let's select the subject layer. On top of that, create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Whatever you do right here will happen to the whole thing. So to limit it just to the subject, click on this button. Now we wanna make just this area right here darker. So let's make it darker just like this. This is fine. Let's also add some contrast like this. Also, this area needs to be a bit more warmer, yellowish. So let's select blue. Blue is the opposite of yellow. So let's decrease the blue as well, slightly like this. Now, as we decrease the blues, it can add some greens. So let's go to green and decrease the green as well. Now select the mask, press Control or Command I to invert the mask. Take the brush, take a soft round brush and with white as the foreground color, you can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Just paint over this area. That's all. Fixed. So here's the before and here's the after. It is matching so well. Let's decrease the opacity to about 74. That's nice. Now there's one finishing touch to every composite that brings everything together. If you just zoom in, have a look. The background is way too smooth and soft, but have a look at the subject. It's not that way. So we need to add some kind of texture to both the background and the subject to blend it well. And that texture you might call grain. There are lots of ways to add grain, but I'm gonna share with you a special one that is also very straightforward. Press Control, Alt, Shift and E to create a merged layer at the top, Command, Option, Shift and E. Let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, hit OK. Now let's go to Filter. You guessed it right, Camera Raw Filter. Inside of the Effects section, Simply increase the green. That's all. If you don't see these extra settings, you can click on the arrow right next to it. Why I also love this method is because of this. Let's increase the green all the way to the right hand side. And if you increase the size of the green, have a look, it also adds some blur to the image as well. And that's what happens, right? When you see a lot of green in old vintage photos, when there's a lot of green, also some kind of blur is also added to the photo. So that's very, very natural of it. Now, of course, we don't want that much. Let's increase the green to about 36. How do you feel about that? Size is fine, roughness is fine. Maybe we can increase the size slightly a bit and we can control the roughness too. Hit okay once you're satisfied and now have a look. It brings everything together so darn well. Have a look right here. 
it's so darn complete right now. So there you go. That's how you can create high quality composites. Using generator fill, of course, it has its limitations. Number one limitation is it will generate a background. If you want Machu Picchu in your background, you cannot have that exactly the way it is. If you want the Taj Mahal in the background, you cannot have that exactly the way it is. It will generate something, something that is unique, something that does not exist. The second limitation is, as of now, if you generate it all at once, it will be low quality. But if the background is blurred, it's not much of an issue. But you can always use your traditional Photoshop techniques and a bit of cleverness to create a better edge and a better match. So right here, we covered it and I don't know where that layer came from. Please don't pay attention to that. We added some blur to hide the low quality and with high end and precise masking, we brought the subject back with very good edges. On top of that, we also covered this area. This seemed to be a bit too bright and we added some flare and we added some color grading and also some grain in the end to bring it all together. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you experiment too. And if this video helped, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.